we've probably all seen people on Facebook invite us to an essential oil party <laughs> where they, they sell essential oils and diffuse them and you get all the, the good vibes from the Relax. oil station. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> We wanted to kind of go into the science behind essential oils and if there's certain benefits or if there maybe are some caveats and just like look and see what studies have been done on essential oils because that's something I've always been curious about because I'm I tend to be a skeptic when it comes to <laughs> those sort of things and the claim that they can fight Ebola and cure the flu and <laughs> make everything better. I guess we should first talk about what essential oils are and essential oils are basically just this distilled liquid from a plant and this liquid is also paired with a carrier liquid to mm -hmm. kind of help it get to your body better. Someone will take like a lavender plant and distill down the essential oil from the lavender plant and then package this up and then sell it as an essential oil. One thing to note with essential oils is that as of now they're unregulated by the FDA. Oh. Yeah, because really? they, they're considered a beauty product. So all beauty products are unregulated by the FDA. I just think because they don't have enough people to go and regulate them. Wow, that's really crazy to me, yeah. especially since, um, I mean, it's not like you're eating these, but you do inhale them. Some, Some people, people do. They'll take, like, put them in little pills and take them too. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's another way you can take your essential oils. That really surprises me. Come mm -hmm. on, FDA. <laughs> One of the issues with this is that there are, right now there's two main essential oil providers. There's Young Living and doTERRA. And these have been, these two providers have been vetted by, I don't, not by the FDA. They've shown their oils to be good and safe and natural. But a lot of times you have these like third party producers that will make these essential oils and either the carrier liquid won't be really good or the, the essential oil itself is just poorly made. So people can have these horrible, allergic reactions because if you think of this oil you're basically taking one plant and putting it like in this little bit mm -hmm. so maybe you have like five mils of this oil and so it is so potent and so strong and so if there's anything that is made poorly with this you can have a severe allergic reaction yes. and some people have even just had allergic reactions with the oils even the ones made by Young Living or doTERRA um, mainly because if you think about it, yes, these oils are natural, but if you distilled oil from a poison ivy plant, it'd still be natural. So some people can just have these adverse reactions to the oils over time because it's so potent. Yeah, like if you have a slight allergy to something, but you maybe didn't notice it, if you don't come in contact with it that much, but you're concentrating it so much. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's what happens. And some people now that they've had these adverse allergic reactions, either they have to be on allergy medicine mm -hmm. or they can't even like use normal body soap that has like trace amounts of these oils in them. One of the things with the oils, since they're not regulated by the FDA, you also see some batch effects with the oils. And the batch effect is basically just where from batch to batch, you see differences in the oils. And this makes sense since you're harvesting it from plants. So depending on what season you harvest it in, or if it's been a rainy season or a dry season, this could affect mm -hmm. the oils. And there's not really a way to control for that or make that better unless you started adding a bunch of other chemicals in there um, to control for that. But that's just something to be, to keep in mind, say if someone has an oil one day and then two months later they get a new batch of the oil and then they react poorly to it. You mentioned these carrier oils that mm -hmm. aren't the, they aren't the plant extract, but they kind of help the, the plant um, concentrate and get to your body. Do, do those have any adverse effects? Some of them do. A lot of times you'll see a warning on your essential oil bottle that you should not put essential oils on and then go out in the sun. Mm. And this is because a lot of these carrier oils will react to the UV light and cause you to be very susceptible to burning. So I read some articles and some people would put it on their feet or on their face and within like a few minutes outside, they would be like blistering just because of the essential oil carrier liquid acting, reacting to the sun. One of the big ways that essential oils have been toted is that they kill bacteria and really help with the flu season or different viruses. And the research that's been done for this is been done just on basic cells and in petri dishes. 
And while yes, they've shown that essential oils kill bacteria, they've also shown that like tequila shots kill bacteria. So it's not necessarily something they've proven to show that it's the essential oils that are actually killing the bacteria. Mm. We've talked about some of the issues with the essential oils, and now we're going to kind of get into some of the science. Two main studies that have shown essential oils to be kind of not great in a certain sense. I read this one article, and this doctor, this medical doctor, he had three boys come to him, separate, separate families, and they had started showing breast development and some more feminine features that were developing and he was trying they both came they all came around the same time and he was trying to look at their environmental factors and see if there was something common to all three of these boys that was causing them to have some breast development and he found that they all used a lavender soap that was common to the three of them oh wow so is it like an endocrine disruptor yeah, so that was what he was saying. They, they did some experiments and they found that lavender in the body can act like estrogen and it can bind to your estrogen receptors. So your estrogen receptors, you really only want them to bind to estrogen because when estrogen binds to the estrogen receptor like a key in a lock, it will trigger all these downstream responses that in females triggers breast development and lots of other things that we need in order to be, to be female. Uh, however, when you have these endocrine disruptors or things that look like estrogen, they can go and bind where estrogen would bind and turn on these pathways when you don't want them turned on. So for males, this is really, really kind of scary. So you mentioned this for the lavender oil. Have they seen this with any of the other oils or have they just not looked? So what they did is they looked at four chemicals that were common to lavender oil. And they also looked at tea tree oil because they found that oil in the mm -hmm. soap as well. And so they, they found these four chemicals that were common between the two and they applied these chemicals to um, human cancer cells. Because human cancer cells, a lot of times they have more estrogen receptor that is expressed because these cancers respond to estrogen really well. So they were kind of see, okay, if we overexpress the estrogen receptor and then apply these oils, will they turn on these estrogen pathways. Mm. That what they saw is that some of these estrogen pathways were being turned on by both lavender and tea tree oil, specifically those four chemicals that were common to both oils. Because mm -hmm. even though essential oils are the natural essence of the plant, you still have to add in some chemicals in order for it to carry well to the body and even just to be in solution. They did say they need to do a lot more research on this to see if lavender and tea tree oil are really the cause, but it was a pretty striking study for me to, to read about and just see, wow, this actually can activate some of those estrogen pathways. Yeah, I mean, just that they started seeing the female characteristics in the male patients. Mm -hmm. And they did you say they went away when they stopped using the soap? They did, okay. yeah. This probably is not going to happen to every male who uses lavender soap. I mean, there are certain people who have more estrogen receptors expressed, so this could cause affect them more, but it's something to still be aware of. I mean, I'm not going to stop using my lavender soap or my tea tree oil face wash, <laughs> but I'm just more aware now and maybe wouldn't use lavender all the time for everything. So another study that some scientists did was using the doTERRA On Guard blend, which is a five essential oil blend of wild oh orange. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so it's a blend of wild orange, clove, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary. And people use this on guard blend to prevent against cold and flu, and a lot of people have said it's worked for them. So what they did, what the scientists did to study this essential oil blend is they used dog kidney cells to grow the influenza virus. And they saw that the influenza virus particles were reduced 40% by applying on guard in the dog kidney cells. But if you think about it, they're marketing this product on guard to humans. Humans aren't putting this on their kidney cells. So this whole study kind of seemed a little bogus. A little sketchy. Yeah, a little sketchy to me. And the study was not funded by doTERRA in any way, mm. shape, or form. But just the way that they conducted the study. If you wanted to really study human cells and influenza, maybe you would take immune cells, human immune cells, and grow those and then apply the on guard and that might get you a little closer right with the placebo effect sometimes if you if you think hard enough that something is going to make you feel better actually like just your positive energy and you being hopeful can actually contribute to making you feel better mm -hmm. so it could be part of it that 
um, just people believing that these essential oils will relax them or make them healthier could be playing a role. Mm -hmm. And they've seen the placebo effect in cancer and other diseases. So it's definitely a real thing and there's, it's hard to control for the placebo effect. We've talked about the kind of negative things about essential oils, but there are definitely some benefits. There have been some studies done that show essential oils really do help people. So one of the studies that I looked at was showing, comparing peppermint oil to acetaminophen hmm. in controlling a tension headache. Okay. So they had participants who had tension headaches. I don't know how they induced the tension headaches or what they did, but they had participants either put peppermint oil on their temples or take some ibuprofen and they looked in 15 minutes to see if their tension headaches had gone away. And they found that the peppermint oil worked just as well as the acetaminophen in getting rid of the tension headache. Wow, that's really striking. Yeah. <laughs> so now I kind of want to go get some peppermint oil and try it out. <laughs> <laughs> They've also shown that tea tree oil has antibacterial and anti-inflammation properties that really help with acne. They did a study looking at benzoyl peroxide compared to tea tree oil mm -hmm. and finding that tea tree oil would work just as well as benzoyl peroxide on getting rid of acne and then you didn't have all the negative effects associated with benzoyl peroxide. And I use a tea tree oil face wash and I would say it really helps my face. <laughs> Don't know if it's placebo effect or not. <laughs> As we kind of mentioned before, tea tree oil also has that potentially negative effect of being an endocrine dis disruptor, but more research definitely needs to be done to cement it as that. They've also seen that people who inhale lavender oil before they go to bed, like if you diffuse it before you go to bed, it helps with your sleep quality. And you also said that they've seen just lavender oil relaxes you a lot yeah, as well. Yeah, it's supposed to be good for relaxing you. I actually go home and light a lavender candle when I'm <laughs> feeling stressed out. <laughs> One interesting thing that I thought was a lot of people say that essential oils helps with their anxiety. In the articles that I read and the studies they've done with anxiety, what they did was they had patients who had had either a heart transplant mm. or a stem cell transplant and they diffused oils in the rooms at, during their recovery and they measured their anxiety using the one of the anxiety tests where you like answer questions about how anxious you are and they they saw that there wasn't really a difference between the group that got the essential oils versus the group that did not get the essential oils so they kind of showed that the essential oils are not directly influencing anxiety but i mean that's just one really particular kind of anxiety so i wonder if it would help more with, with some general anxiety right. disorder and not um like some traumatic Thing, like surgery happening yeah. yeah but I mean you mentioned like lighting a candle when you right. go home that really right. helps relax you I do the same thing and I know a lot of people do that for the essential oils as well it's just diffusing them so they can just smell them or maybe putting it on just to get that smell and I I definitely I definitely think there's there's something in that that may be more of just depending on the person, mm -hmm. it can make your anxiety a little bit lower, just make you feel a little happier. Right, and maybe there is placebo effect in, involved in that too, but hey, if it works for you. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the verdict? Essential oils, <laughs> good, bad, both? I think, I think they're both. I mean, <laughs> a lot of the topics we talk about, we give both sides. And with essential oils, there's definitely some, there's definitely a lot of false claims about essential oils. I kind of get a little, a little angry when I see people saying like, oh, essential oils cured my Ebola, or I my cold completely went away when I used the essential oils. I don't think those are necessarily true, just based on the research and what we've seen looking through some of these things today. But there's so many other ways where the essential oils are helpful in helping with headaches and kind of relaxing you. So I think, as with always, take it with a grain of salt and just maybe just keep doing your research. There's always different things being done with essential oils. There's a lot of studies that you can look at, but... Yeah, and it really does seem to depend on which oil you're looking at, right? Yeah, and a lot of people use candles in a very similar way, and we know that candles are not curing us of anything, even though we're inhaling the smell. In the same way, I kind of think essential oils are not curing us of anything. We're just inhaling the smell and relaxing. Mm -hmm.